life in Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, I commit the totality of my life, family and members of the house of destiny into your hands for safety, well-being, preservation. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, let's put our hands together, Father, in Jesus' name. Please, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the grace he has given to us to wait on him these days. I know that God has not asked us to seek him in vain. He has not asked us, the house of destiny, to seek him in vain. We want to take our royal feet today. This topic is pray in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The text is from Isaiah 58 verse 9. And it says, Then shalt thou call... And the Lord shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. Hallelujah. God expects us to respond to darkness and negativities by releasing his light in prayer. Light and darkness cannot cohabit. So when we pray in the power of the Spirit, darkness, hardship, failure, recession, setback, strongholds, witchcraft, principalities, and powers have no option than to flee. Hallelujah. The same God who parted the Red Sea for the Israelites is this minute parting our Red Sea and delivering us from the pursuit of the enemy. I thought you would say amen. amen. In this month, I see the arm of the Lord restoring, reviving, and giving men double blessings for their troubles. Say amen. amen. As we pray in the power of the Spirit, mercy, grace, and the free gift of salvation shall abound. Hallelujah. A lady testified of how she slept in her home, and at about midnight, her area was attacked by hoodlums. As they went from door to door, raping and stealing items, her home was not touched. Glory. As she called unto the God of heaven to rescue her, and he heard her prayers, it was a miracle beyond her. As by morning, tells and wells and the level of destruction by the robbers were great. The fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. It is time to seek the Lord and not man. It is time to meditate on his word and not seek false prophets. As we respond to the call of the Lord to seek him in the place of prophetic prayers and proclamations, his arm shall be revealed to all pertaining to us in the name of Jesus. Can you shout a louder amen? amen. Please may we rise to our feet as we take this prayer point. Hallelujah. You may say this after me. As I pray in the power of the Spirit, I receive divine power deposits to overcome the enemy. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Open your mouth and make that declaration. As I pray in the power of the Spirit, I receive divine power deposits to overcome the enemy. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Labo shatata la da da da. Hallelujah. Let's take the second prayer point. You may say this after me. Please say this after me. As I release the light of God in the place of prayer, testimonies shall abound. The captives, even the lawful captives, shall be set free. For God is set to do a new thing upon the earth. Hallelujah. As I release the light of God in the place of prayer, testimonies shall abound. The captives, even the lawful captives, shall be set free. Hallelujah. For God is set to do a new thing in the earth. Labo shatata la da da da. Balebo satanta la da 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 da. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. You never changed yesterday, today, and forever. Nobody loves me like you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are the living God. God. All right, everybody, let's do it together. One, two, three. You are the same. You are the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. Nobody is. You never change. Yeah. 
got my mind made up and I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind, got my mind made up and I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus I won't start back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind, my mind made up And I won't, and I won't turn, turn back Cause, I, cause I, I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up I want to see my Jesus someday. This is my testimony. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Your vibrations of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, Lord. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. Lift it up to him. Say, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh, I will worship you, I will worship you forever, I will love you forever.
Yele buura baka inda ba zonto jira ba handa. Yende bu jira baka inda ba zanta raba. Raba ka inda ba zira ba andar baka inda. Yende bu buura ba yanda baka inda. Yende yende bu buura baka inda bu kura ba zinta. Buura ba anda baka inda ba zonto jira ba handa. Yende bu jira baka inda. Yende bu zoro bu jira ba handa. Yenda bozonto jira ba anda ba kainda bozonto jira ba handa yenda bozonto jira ba kainda ba kainda ba zinta inda bokujinda ba kainda mukura ba zinta ra bo jira ba handa ra bo zinta ura ba inda kaka kainda kaka kainda mukura ba kainda ba zinta bo jira ba handa yenda bozonto jira ba handa yenda bozonto jira ba kainda ba zinta yenda ba zinta ra ba kainda. Ura baka inda bo zonto jira ba handa ba yanda bo kujira ba anda baka yende bo zonto bo kuyanda ba zinta ka inda ba zinta ura baka inda baka inda baka zinta ra ba zinta ura baka inda ba zinta ra bo jira baka inda bo zonto jira ba handa yende bo jira baka inda ura baka inda baka zinta jira ba handa ra bo zonto baka inda bo zonto jira baka inda ba zinta. Yenda bo jira ba handa, yanda ba zinta yaka inda bo zonto jira ba handa, yende bo kujira ba handa, yanda ba da 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 da, yende re bo bra ba ba ka inda ba zinta jira ba handa ba zinta, ura ba ka inda ba zinta ra ba kujira ba ka inda ba ka zinta ba ka inda ba zanta ra ba, ura ba ka inda ba zinta. Hura baka inda baka zinta rabu hura bahanda baka inda baka zinta hura baka inda baka zonto rabu bahanda baka zinta yende boku rabu zinta bujira bahanda baka zinta hura baka inda baka zinta rabu baka inda baka zonto jira bahanda bara baka inda baka zanta rabu baka inda baka zonto jira bahanda hura baka inda baka zanta yere boku bara baka jira bahanda baka zonto bujinda. Hura baka inda ba zinta ra bujinda. Hura baka inda ba zinta ra bujira baka inda. Mato jira ba handa. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we put those hands together for the Lord? Can we put those hands together for the Lord? Ma kande le brodo bo si kata ya da bo shata kaya. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I'm going to read it down, but my focus is on verse 28. And it says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. That's the word of the Lord today. It just came in my spirit. I want to read it before we proceed. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts and the young locusts. The other locusts and the locust swarm. My great army that I have sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel. Then you will know I am in destiny. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. And afterwards, someone says, afterwards. Afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I would pour out my spirit on all people. Doesn't matter what you're hearing, what you're seeing, the Lord is pouring out his spirit among all people. This is a time of revival. This is a time when the Lord is doing great things, even in spite of what you are hearing. This time is also a time of prayer. I want to encourage us as we rise on our feet for our prophetic declaration. We're going to say, 
God shall reveal himself to me by his spirit and by his word. Can we be on our feet this evening as we say that to the Lord, as we pray that together? God shall reveal himself to me by his spirit and his word. I shall experience turnaround and elevation because I am open to receive what God has freely given me in Christ. Are we open? Are we open? Let's take that again. God shall reveal himself to me by his spirit and his word. I shall experience turnaround and elevation because I am open to receive what God has freely given me in Christ. If we believe that, begin to declare that. I am open to receive from the Lord. Even in his presence today, I am open to receive from the Lord. I shall experience a turn around. I shall experience an elevation. I shall experience that great promise that the Lord has for me. I am open. My spirit is open. My channels are open. I receive that which the Lord has for me in this season. All that the Lord has promised me. All that the Lord has prophesied, declared over my life. I shall receive them. I am open. My spirit is open. My heart is open. I receive them with thanksgiving today. In the name of Jesus. By your word today, I receive, I receive, I receive your word over my life. I receive your word over my spirit. I shall experience that which, O oh Lord, you have spoken concerning me. I shall see it. I shall partake of it. I shall walk in it. In the name of Jesus. O pali karina mazetetete. Makuri da balobo siakada. Ma libazunde rika da ba. La baluli adale bo shetakaya. Ma ki karebo soka libadaba. Mando lo brodoboske. Ke paliba sotakaya. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Recently our father shared on our platform as leaders a video. And from what I picked on that, in that video, it just, it just came to me that because of the times we are in, there is this quest for material success. And when our mother was sharing with us yesterday, it came back into my heart. You know, when you see the success or the things you call success, material things around, it, it just has a way of looking like it's taking precedence over your life, what is mostly important. But that's not what the Lord has for us in this season. We're going to pray and we're going to say to the Lord, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I yield to your will and purpose in my life. I yield to your work in my life in this season and beyond. I yield to the Holy Spirit, my daily companion. I choose to be obedient to the Holy Spirit leading. Begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer. Lord, I choose to be obedient to the Holy Spirit leading. Is the Lord leading you? Are you having a prodding in your heart that doesn't go down well with what you think you should be doing? Father, Lord, in this season, I yield, O oh Lord. I'm obedient, O oh Heavenly Father to that which you are commanding, that which you are directing, that which you are instructing me in this season, oh God. I yield my will, I yield my purpose, I yield my plans, I yield my goals to align with your will and counsel, to align with your will and precept for my life because I know all things work together for good to them that love you and to them that are called according to your will and counsel. Father, in this season, oh God, I yield my senses to you. I yield my thoughts, oh God. Holy Spirit, take charge over my thoughts, my thinking processes. Yield, oh God, I yield myself to you. Be my daily companion. I promise to be obedient to your will and command. I receive the grace, oh Heavenly Father, to receive your leading at all times, in season and out of season. In the name of Jesus. 
Rumba sika da le basota lika badaya. Matu karida bazoka de abana shete. Rika bazonda liga badena na. In Jesus name we pray. If you have prayed that prayer, can we say a big amen? Amen. amen. Today our focus on our prayer was the covenant of long life, longevity. Longevity. We're going to be declaring and we're going to be declaring like this. This year, we are still in the year, it has not finished. So let's say it like we are still in the year. This year is going to be my year of spontaneous healing. Let's take it again. This year is going to be my year of spontaneous healing. For me, my family, the house of destiny, and everyone associated with us, we will experience all-round healing. Begin to pray that prayer. All-round healing, I would experience it. This year, I would experience spontaneous healing. Are you broken in your heart? You may not just be sick in your body. This year is a year of spontaneous healing. Quick healing. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. For your family. For your loved ones. Do you know people who have been so bastardized by the economy, by the hardship around? Pray a healing over their life and decree and declare spontaneous healing. They will not be depressed or fall into a state of depression or even thinking of being suicidal. Pray those spontaneous healing over their life, over every member of destiny, everyone who is part of destiny, connected to destiny. We prophesy over their life spontaneous healing. No matter what they may be going through, we prophesy over their life spontaneous healing. Whatever it is that looks as if it's taking over their thoughts, their mind, we take captive today and we prophesy healing, 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 healing in their bodies, healing in their mind, healing in their bodies, healing in their mind, healing in their bodies, healing in their mind, in the name of Jesus, spontaneous healing, healing on every side. Maka lebrodobo sokataya, mandi kaba sheteri daba sunde kada bale korodobo skataya daba. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Begin to wave those hands to the Lord and worship Him. Thank Him for answering your prayers. Thank Him, He's ever faithful. He's ever faithful. He's ever faithful. Put your hands together as we take our seats and we invite the praise team. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you. Thank you because you are the captain of the hosts. Hallelujah. Faithful is our God. The mighty warrior. Great in battle. The beginning and the end. The eternal one that lives. He that speaks and none can alter. Blessed be your name, O God. Let your light shine, O God. Let your light shine. Break every darkness and give us victory. You are God. You are not a man. Men will always fail. They make promises that they cannot keep. Sometimes they speak so boastfully. And at the end they can do nothing. But Lord, you are the silence achiever. You achieve mighty things without saying anything. You come through our darkness and cause it to become light. You come into our valleys and cause us to rise to the mountain top. Thank you for keeping us from January. Thank you for keeping us in February. Thank you for keeping us in March. Thank you for keeping us in April. Thank you, Lord, in keeping us in May. Lord, you kept us in June. Today you brought us into July. Against the pandemic. Against the fears. Against satanic intimidation against the debts that are surrounding oh God who is like unto you mighty in battle oh Lord we bless your name thank you for establishing your kingdom in our hearts thank you for living in us who are we that you are mindful of? Lord, you have given us beyond what humans can provide. Sometimes our people are tired of helping. But Father, you've never been tired. Great is our faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. When we look to our rights, we look to our lives, we look before us and behind us. There is no better word to express the things you have done than to say you are faithful. Thank you, O oh God. Breaking the barriers, removing obstacles, establishing your counsel, O oh God, so that we can stand in the midst of our dreams. Lord, you are the one that has countered every terrorist attacks against us. You have overtaken them in their craftiness. You have caused that their hands have not been able to perform their very plans. Thank you, Lord, for causing them to meet with darkness even in the light time. It is you. It is you, oh God, it is you. It is you that has healed us in our places of sickness. 
that many of us that were sick, Lord, that you have risen and you have healed. You have rebuked death, oh God, many times over us. For our brothers and sisters, our sons, our daughters, our husbands, our wives, oh God, who is like unto you. Mighty God in battle. He that speaks and it comes to pass. He that declares it and no one can say no. Thank you, Father. We came to bless your name on this very day of seeking your face and looking into that very place of victory, even the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise for thinking of us. For being so mindful of us. For providing for us. For protecting us. For supplying our needs. Providing life. Rebuking the devil. Telling him don't touch my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Oh Lord. You are wonderful. Thank you for being in the midst of those who discuss evil against us. The unseen guests. Oh Lord, thank you. Because you've not allowed the enemy to override us, oh God. Wickedness has not succeeded over our lives. It is not as the thoughts. You've strengthened our faith in you. You've made us to know that you have never called us in vain. Blessed be your name, oh God. For you have gone ahead of us at all times and you have made us to see your victory oh hallelujah it is you oh God that has made us and not us making ourselves many times we get discouraged by what we see sometimes by what people do to us sometimes by what we hear people say about us but Lord you have kept our minds intact that we have not become insane. Oh God, it is only you. It is you we trust. It is you we believe. Have your way, mighty God. Raise us up so that we can continue to say thank you. Make us your instrument of praise and worship so that we can be truly the sacrifices of praise. The living praise of God. That our lips will offer unto you. Praises that can never be altered. Help us that our ears will hear the sound from heaven. Help our feet that will not be overtaken. Cause our heart to be stayed on you. So Lord. As we continue to wait upon you and to seek your face. Turn our night into school of the prophets. Open our eyes to see the secret things that are contained in your word. Encourage us, oh God, even in the news that we hear that are not encouraging. Thank you, daddy. Be God over our lives. Arise, oh God, and let your victory be our portion. Who is like unto you, mighty God? We adore you. Thank you for destiny. The house of destiny says thank you. Thank you that from 1996 till now, Lord, you have been faithful to the house of destiny. Many have come, many have gone, but Lord, you have been good to us. Where would we go to if not to you? Who is he that defends us if it is not you that defended us? Thank you, daddy. We said, hallowed be your name. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. You may be seated, give him praise. 
I begin a series on the blessings of God in the season of famine. In the season of confusion, in the season of difficulties, in the season of toughness. When tough times come, the only thing that can help you is the blessing. And I need for you to understand something. The blessings that God brings are far more than the works of your hands. When a man is blessed, nothing can be compared to that blessing. I came to say to you, even in the most difficult times, blessings shall speak for you. In the time that you don't know where to go, how to go, what to do, blessings shall speak for you. I came here to announce your blessings. Oh, if there is anything you need now, the blessings of the Lord. <laughs> Jabez said, bless me, Lord. And the Lord answered his prayers and blessed him. As honorable as he was, he became more honorable. I believe that the works of your hands shall begin to enjoy the favor of heaven. Blessings are coming because God is about to overturn everything that stood against you. When a man is blessed, obstacles flee. When a man is blessed as he arrives, difficult situations become small. Because you see, blessing is the opposite of curse. When a man is cursed, everything that is simple becomes difficult. But a man that is blessed, difficult things become simple. I say to you in this season, blessing shall be your portion. I was praying three days ago. And I said to the Lord that I need to know the direction before the end of this meeting. The Lord said to me, command blessings upon my people. And the Lord said, watch out on what is going to happen. Friends, I came to say to you, the hour of God's blessings have come. It does not matter the news you would have heard. Blessings will begin to make you become a mad piece of heaven. You are going to become the ambassador of God. The Lord said to me, in the season that you are in, the only thing that will solve that problem and turn things around is blessing. So I have come with the blessings of the Lord. Haven't you heard when Balaam and Barak, Barak they came to a season where they said, curse God's people. And he said, whom the Lord has blessed, no man can curse. I want to say to you that there are irreversible blessings that follows a man and it goes beyond his generation. It becomes a transgenerational thing. It stops the hand of death and poverty. It takes away the issue of dryness and begins to bring you into a place of total liberation. I say to you in the name of Jesus, that thing will begin to happen to you. Many people hear about how God blesses others. And they wonder how does it happen. I say to you, you are next in line. The Lord shall bless you. It is in the blessings of God that you forget your weariness. It is in the place of God's blessing that you begin to forget the hardship you've gone through. It is in the place of his blessings that everything that you had gone through will become nothing. You will no more bother yourself about what man is saying. Because blessing will say to you, you are not in that class. Oh, men have risen up to say all kinds of things and to do things against God's people. It seems as if God has traveled to a long way and on a long journey. You have prayed and it seems nothing is coming your way. But I can say to you, I could recall in the word of God, it says in the season where there shall be so much trouble in the land of Israel, he said it is at that time that highways shall be made. He said in that season they shall make so much progress. And you will say, how could these things be even in this hour of their trouble? Friends, God seeks to bless you in your time of trouble. Trouble provokes God. To begin to act. Pr 
problems provoke God to begin to answer beyond your prayers. And I said to you, no matter how good you are in prayer, you can never pray above the blessings of God. <laughs> when God blesses you, your prayer is only to just put your mind in the right frame. But unto God, he has already said he will bless you. Now I pronounce blessings upon your life. People shall be of your colleagues, but they will not know what has happened to you. People will be in the same office with you, but they will come and say, but what did you do differently? Blessings are going to overtake you in the name of Jesus. You see, Noah had come out of the boat and something happened. The child had come and had done something that it should be cursed. But because it was part of the first blessing that came when the covenant of God was entered. And the day that the father raised an altar and sacrificed to the God of heaven when they came out from that boat. And when it was time for curse to come, curse could not reach him. Instead, it touched his own child. Because you see, a man that has been blessed, curses cannot rest upon them. <laughs> he can be the worst man because of what has happened but because he was blessed original blessing is greater than the latter curse <laughs> see if you are of the stock of the blessed those that are blessed let any man come later and curse you he shall not stand that is what the Bible said that curseless shall any curse stand no he will not harm you so I came to you today as we begin on this new series of this prayer and fasting and seeking the Lord that your prayers will not be in vain. The Lord shall begin to uncover things. Let me say something to you. In the season of your blessing, all generational curses are forever terminated. Oh, I came to say to you that if you have been washed by the blood, if you have come into the new covenant relationship with God, then whatever curse worked in your family line, oh, you are the last that the curse will touch. And you are the beginning of a new generation in the name of Jesus. I am speaking to you today by what God is about to do. You are in a season of God's transforming grace grace of God will locate you and will allocate you of the blessings of heaven in the name of Jesus let me just show you something because I'm going to take the time out to pray and to show you what God says because the Bible is speaking in the book of Isaiah I want you to see something there Isaiah chapter 54 the Bible is speaking at verse number 1 it is very interesting how in the Old Testament we begin to see God beginning to speak about certain things that look impossible. They don't look real. When you look at the word of God and your situation, they don't match. <laughs> Why? Because God is just too much. He says, sing, O barren. How do you mean? Why should I sing? I am already barren. You have identified me as being barren. Barrenness is unfruitfulness. Please understand, barrenness in this season is not just about you having a baby. Barrenness in this season is about you not having. Dryness is what you have. Fruitlessness is what you find. But God is beginning to say to the house of destiny, sing. 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 He says, sing you who have not born. That's, you have not been bearing fruit. You've not been. It is in your heart. It is what you want. You are praying, believing God that you are going to be fruitful. Yet it has not come. So now, the command now says, do what? Sing. <laughs> Learn to sing in this season of God's command. We are talking about you saying what heaven is saying. It is not about just reading the Bible, but finding out what God is saying. I came to announce you are going to sing. Oh, let your amen go past your first mask. <laughs> he said, sing. 
sing. You that has not born, he said, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You have not labored with child. That is your, you don't have the experience of, you don't have any experience. But God began to decree and declare. He said, you should sing aloud. What did he say? Sing. He did not say murmur. He did not say meditate. He did not say think about it. He said sing aloud. Because you see, when you begin to respond to God's word, as you declare it. You remember, a man of God, Abraham, was in his tent. And God had promised him of children. And he has stayed 25 years, no child. And so God came one day in the night and said to him, Hey, come follow me. I want you to look into the stars, uh, into the heavens. I want you to count. Now, you know when God did that, he wanted him to say it out. Count. So he would have started counting till he wouldn't know how to count anymore. And God said, just as you have seen them and you have numbered them and you can't finish numbering, so shall your children be. You see, God does not need to be advised for him to know that this is human. It's not, it's, that he's not here to know what that would mean. So now, he says, sing, you have not labor with child. Then he came to say something. He said, for more are the children of what? Abba. Are you seeing that? He did not change the dynamics there. He still said, the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. So he said, more for more are more ah this is what god is saying to you because it is time for you to be fruitful it is time for you to begin to increase it is time for you to know what it means to be blessed in this season heaven is blessing you oh your business will not collapse it will not close he said the lord shall cause his word to be performed on your behalf can I hear somebody shouting amen here? So he's talking about the barren, but he says sing because your children are at the hand. That means that fruitfulness, harvest is coming. It is by the word of the Lord. It is not by how much you have labored. He said he that has not labored, that is you don't even have it. It is not even coming. But he said begin to shout. He said shout aloud. He said begin to sing. Begin to, because heaven is about to do something. I am ready. Somebody say, I am ready, Lord. I am ready to be blessed. My season of barrenness are over. That my season is over in the name of Jesus. So he said, you have more. That is God is saying to you, I challenge your challenges. I challenge the barrier. I challenge your obstacle. By my word, your problems are being challenged. So I came today to announce to somebody, heaven is at your case now. In the name of Jesus. Blessings are knocking at your door. In the name of Jesus. When a man is blessed. Doors open at his arrival. When a man is blessed. Doors open at. When you arrive. Doors just spring open for you. I see that happening in the name of Jesus. I said, I see that happening. So verse 2 now said, he says, lengthen the cord. He said, move the thing. Begin to move. He said, enlarge the place of your tent. Why? Because so much is going to happen. Enlarge it. Enlarge it. Enlarge it. Because something is about, something is about breaking forth for you. It's not just that praying and you don't see results. Time to see results of your prayers have come. In the name of Jesus. If you have faith in God's word, then receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Enlarge, enlarge the space, the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not do what? Now what it means is don't pity that place. Don't pity it. 
Don't, don't, just, just say I enlarge. Now, I want you to take prophetic actions in your prayers. It, it is not that we pray, you are standing there, begin to see it happening. S say to the Lord, I, I, I move this thing from here. Uh, because where it stopped is where the miracle was to stop. So you say, God, this is what I used to have before. Now I move it to Korak Panabia. Oh, somebody's not talking. I move on this side to uh, Itam Junction. Uh, are you listening now? I move on this other side to Wangiba, the beach. I, I move because you see, you see this building? Sometimes if God is to fill this building, this building can only take the capacity based on where it, the, the walls are. Now God is saying to you, break the walls. Break the walls. In this COVID-19, heaven is about to smile at you. <laughs> so I bless you. You are blessed. In the name of Jesus. In your going out, you are blessed. In your coming in, you are blessed. In the works of your hands, you are blessed. In your office, you are blessed. In your business, you are blessed. I rebuke dryness. I rebuke dryness. I rebuke hardship. I rebuke disappointment. Any man who wants to disappoint you in your business, I rebuke him. I rebuke her. Whoever that want to cut off something that was to be given to you, I rebuke that person. I say in this season, men shall be forced to give you. Men shall be forced to give to you. Men shall be forced to give to you. Therefore, I speak over you by the word of the Lord that you have come into the season of your blessing. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Those who could not favor you before, I demand that they begin to favor you. It is the hour of you seeing your miracle in your hands. Therefore, you shall handle your miracles in the name of Jesus. You shall handle your miracles. You will handle your testimony. Beginning from now, I command the heavens to open over you. Beginning from now, I decree and I declare, let the hand of God be moved on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, those who did not want to listen to you, I demand they must begin to listen to you from now. In the name of Jesus, this season is a season of God's multiplication. Therefore, heaven shall bless you. Therefore, heaven shall multiply you. I release it now in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, that is your portion. Take it, it is yours. In the name of Jesus. Now, let me take you to verse 5. I want to take you to, to verse 5. Now, look at verse number 5 of that same solution. For your maker is your husband. Have you seen a husband who has capacity, the wife begging? No. Unless he's a wicked man. Where a husband is blessed, the wife does not look for money for shoes. She will not look for clothes, money to change clothes. She will not be crying for, for food. No. What kind of a husband is that? God said to you, I am. For your maker is, that is, I am in covenant with you. Marriage is covenant. It's a covenant relationship between the man and the woman. So now, it, God now said, your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the holy one of Israel. He is called the God of where? The God of the whole earth. What does that mean? He said, if that thing is not in Nigeria, it will cause it to come from America. <laughs> if that thing is not in America, he will go to Australia and he will bring it. If it is not in Australia, he will go to the Middle East and he will bring it. Now, are you ready for what is about to happen? He said, he is the, the God of the whole earth. That is, that is who is speaking. So, don't be limited to Yahuyo. Don't be limited to your Calabar. Don't be limited to your Houston or Canada. Don't be limited to your London or your wherever you are. God is saying to you, whatever is limiting you cannot limit me. 
in this season, when I say lengthen, I mean it because I am your husband. I am your maker. I am going to make something happen in the, in the way that you would never have believed. He said, but I will make it happen because your maker is your husband. And he says, he is called. Oh, <laughs> he is called the God of the whole earth. So, don't limit yourself by who you are believing will help you. Sometimes you have hope in some people. He will come from here. He will come. God said, don't limit me. I am the God of all the earth. I'm about to surprise you. I will go anywhere to bring it. I will go to any extent to let you have it. Because I have, made, I have put myself in this thing, I will also bring myself out. Oh, somebody's not saying amen in the house. So, so I came to announce to somebody, the remaining days of this prayer and fasting, get ready for blessings. He told me, he said, say to my people, I'm going to bless them. And I, because himself knows that I need their blessings too. So blessings are coming my way. I don't know about you. Uh, uh, is blessing coming your way? Uh, because he is a covenant keeping God. And so he is going to bless you. Can somebody shout amen? amen? Now look at verse number 6. I just want to dwell here. Then I will continue tomorrow. Now look at verse number 6. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Like a youthful wife when you were refused. Says you are God. Verse 7. I will read to verse 10. Verse 7. God bless you. Take a look at it. For a mere moment, it was as if God had forsaken us from January to March or from March till <laughs> March, April, May into June. It's as if God forsook the whole earth. He said for a moment. <laughs> but with great mercies, I will gather you. Somebody shout amen. He is about to gather you into his banqueting table. And his banner over you. He said, with a little rod, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I have mercy on you, says the Lord. You are redeemer, verse number 9. And so for this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Verse number 10, now look at it. For the mountain shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Somebody shout yes. I saw this scripture and it agreed with me so much and I said, he is talking about me. He is talking about me. He is talking about me. I don't know about you, but I kept saying he is talking about me. He is talking about me. And I kept saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, kept, I just kept saying, I could not stop saying thank you, Lord. Because I can say that I've experienced everything the word says. And also, I'm going to experience what he's saying again. Because he said, he says, the Lord, he has had mercy. It is not by power, but by the mercies of the Lord. Heaven shall begin to turn the tables. The tables are about to turn around. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tables are to turn around because God is saying to you, I am blessing you. My eyes are fixed on you. My blessings are coming upon you. You are going to enjoy what you never have thought is possible. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Now, let me just give you four reasons why God wants to bless you. Very simple. Why would God want to bless me? Number one, God is going to bless you because it is his nature. It is his nature. It is his character. It is his life. 
he, that is who he is. Oh, you have, you have offended. You have done all kinds of things. He knows. But you see, his nature is a nature of blessing. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 22, you see, you need to know this God that you are praying to. Many people don't know the God they are praying to. That is the problem. And God bless them saying, what? That is who I am. That is who I am. Be fruitful. And do what? And multiply. And what again? And fill the waters in the seas. And let birds multiply. It is because of you God did all of that. That is his life. He multiplies things. He does not subtract things. He multiplies things. So he said, and he blessed them. When God blesses you, there is evidence. And so when he blessed them, what did he say? Be fruitful. Friends, this year, 2020, you shall be surprised at what God shall do with you. You shall be baffled at what God shall say to you. I, I, I always love to see how this God will do things. A few days ago, I, I went to God in prayer and I asked him for something. And I said, I don't know even where he's coming, how he's coming. And so I just trusted the Lord and I finished praying. I pray simple prayers. I don't pray complicated prayers. My prayers are not complicated at all. Simple. Say what you want. Tell him. Say it. And so when he said to me, I'm going to bless them. Just say to them, I'm, I'm about blessing them. I said, God, it is not just you telling me to tell them, oh, I am there, oh. Because you see, you can preach to others and then you yourself, you don't have anything. Don't you remember in that scripture, the Bible speaking and said that he was a man of God. He was righteous. He was a holy man, a great prophet, but he died poor and left the children. And then, you know, borrowing money and dying and leaving them. He was a prophet. But his prophecy did not work for him. He worked for others. So when God said, tell my people I'm going to bless, I said, I am part of it. Lord, begin with me, begin with me. Uh, don't take me out, oh, I want to be part of it. Beloved, this is that season. And I promise you by God, the Lord shall do far more than what you have asked. So when he blessed them, he said to them, be free. Every time God says you are blessed, he tells you what you are blessed with. Or what you are blessed by. It's not just a general statement. You are blessed. So if he is blessing you, he's blessing you with something. There is a blessing that no man can alter. Are you listening now? In this season of not having, heaven shall cause you to have. I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, the hour has come. It is the nature of God. It is his nature to bless. It's like, it's like if you have known me over a period of time, you will know my nature. He said, ah, that is the man's nature. The man's nature. You know, I don't know how to keep people in my heart for long. If you offend me, I will tell you the way it is. I don't know how to, that I have money in my pocket and you are crying looking for food, I will give it to you. My nature, by nature, somebody's nature reflects his action. His acts, his life, his attitude is expressed by his nature. He said, that is a man. Like people who pray, he said, ah, it is nature to pray. It's not difficult for him to pray or for her to pray because that is his nature. He just, so for God, his nature is a blessing nature. It's to bless you. I want you to know the God you are talking about. He said he owns the whole earth. Because he owns the whole earth, he knows where to go and bring your blessing. <laughs> they said that thing is not in Uyo. He knows where to go to China, he will bring it. Are you understanding me? They say it is not in Uyo. He, he goes to Korekwene, tell somebody in Korekwene, go locate him or her. Are you ready for what God is about to do? So why would God bless? Because God's nature is a nature that blesses. Number two, it is your covenant right for you to be blessed. It is your covenant right 
for you to be blessed. But for the fact that you are in covenant with God, God blesses you automatically. It is your covenant right. Like children and parents. It is those children's covenant right to be blessed. They don't even need to ask. Should they ask, they will get. Why? Because by the covenant that their parents walk in, the children are automatically blessed. Somebody's not saying something here. And so blessings of God come because you are in covenant with him. It is your covenant right. My wife demands on me is because it is her right by our covenant. By the covenant that I and my wife shares, she does not have to go begging for what I have. Are you understanding that? By nature, that is by that covenant that both of us enjoy, she should never go looking for anything anywhere that I already have. It's like I have cars packed and my wife is trekking. It's an anathema. No. So by covenant, everything I have is his or hers. And everything she has, they are all mine. That's covenant. So because you are in covenant with God, God has no alternative. God cannot withhold from you. God cannot say, I can't. Because it would have breached the covenant. For God not to give you is that he has breached it. And God is never a liar. Oh, Jesus. And the fact that when Jesus came, the Bible said, if the old covenant was enough, there wouldn't have been any need for the new one. But you see what happened? He came with the new one and he said, the new one is far, far greater. It's far, far better. So you have a better covenant in the new covenant that nothing can be denied to you. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, what will happen? I will give it to you. Why? Because you are in covenant with me. Because you are in covenant with me, what I have is yours. So the Father has left everything in the hands of his Son. So he gives it. And makes it happen. So in your place as a covenant child, there is no power that can stop you from getting your miracle. If you are the one, say hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 13. I said to you that it is your covenant right. Somebody say, blessing is my covenant right. Say it one more time. Blessing is my covenant right. The Bible speaking here said, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by anyone greater, what did he do? He swore by himself. It's, that means he was telling Abraham, if I cease to say, to do what I have said, let me cease to be God. <laughs> that is what he said. There was no other greater. So he now said to Abraham, I've looked up, I've looked down, I've searched everywhere. I can't find any that's greater than myself that I could have used that one to seal this covenant. Therefore, I seal it by myself and in myself and with myself and about myself because I am sovereign and I'm saying to you, Abraham, if I fail, if I fail, if I fail, if I fail, let me cease to be God. That is why no matter where Abraham went, God was with him. God supplied. God was there. Are you in covenant with God? Did you come into covenant with God this year? Then this year cannot take you out. No evil shall befall you this year. The devil cannot destroy you this year. No devil can take you out no matter how. He walks with two hands and two legs. 
God punished that devil. You cannot go down. No matter how the enemy manipulate things, God has another way of blessing you. God is blessing you this day in the name of Jesus. So your prayer and your fasting shall not be in vain. From now to the 21st, I want to promise you something. Heaven will knock at your door. Blessing shall locate you in the day. Blessing shall locate you while you are sleeping. Your phone will be keeping a miracle testimony for you. Your email will be keeping a mail that is covering your miracle. I begin to speak into the heavens and I say in this hour, let it begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Let me cease to be God and he can never cease to be God. So he shall keep to his promise. He shall keep to his promise. The third reason why God is going to bless you now is because blessing is your inheritance. Not only is it that it is the nature of God, not only that you have, you know, a covenant with God, but that by covenant and by his promise, Blessing is what you have to inherit, not desolation. That is what, <laughs> you, you, your father cannot give you what he does not have. Are you understanding this? No. So, your inheritance, I mean, when my father died, he left three plots of land and one big house for us. That is what I've inherited. So I said to my three brothers, everybody take one plot. That is what he left for us. That is our inheritance. And for the building, I said to my other two brothers, none of you has this building. I have the building because as a first one, I have double. I had bought the land and also the house. So I said to my sisters that are not yet married, I said, live here as long as you are not married. But don't claim the house, it's not yours. I said to my brothers, the two of them that were living there at the time, I said, just stay here. When you build your house, get out. This is my house. And they know it. My, my second brother, my junior brother, when he finished building his own house, he took the two rooms and put a tenant. And I called him. I said, Odo, come, 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 come. Who told you to put the tenant? Tell that tenant to leave. He said, bro, it's my, this is, this is my, I said, you don't have anything there. You don't. I told you people, I said, you don't, so get out. Get, tell that person to get out, otherwise I will send police after them. So my brother just said, my brother is not good when he's angry, so please. Get, so the person left. I told my second brother, go take that side and leave. Now, the third brother, now you're only there as long as you don't have your house. The day you build your house, it is over. Inheritance is what you were born into or what your father left with you. So what did God leave with you? Blessings. That's what he left, not curse. Not curse, not sickness, not disease, not poverty. He left you a blessing. So it is my inheritance that is why there, there are no two ways about it. I am blessed. Glory to Jesus. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter. No, no. First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. First Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Now, now, I want you to know that if God says this is yours, take it. It's yours. It is mine. Are you there? Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers be, tender-hearted be, covet, be cautious, verse 9, let's see, not returning evil, no, that's not it, first, I think it's chapter 1, I think it's chapter 1, huh? Huh? Receiving the end of your faith, whom having not seen, no, 
Go to verse 3. Go to verse 3. Go to verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has done what? Has begotten us again to what? A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse number four. Now look at it. And uh, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. What happens? Reserved in heaven for you. That is your inheritance. Blessing is your inheritance. So when you were saved, delivered, washed by the blood, you are now in the new nature of God. So he now said, there is something that was kept for you. The blessings of God can never be corrupted. Somebody's not saying something here. When God blesses you, nothing can corrupt it. He said that blessing is undefiled. He said it, it does not fade away. It is reserved. Oh God. It is what? It's reserved. So no matter what happens, the blessing is what heaven has kept for you. Glory to Jesus. It is your inheritance. So I have an inheritance of blessing. Therefore, stop praying against no things and begin. Oh, I've been cursed. My mother cursed. My father cursed. My uncle cursed. My the other person cursed. If they were cursed, it ended with them. I am blessed. I, I, my inheritance is called blessing. Oh, that is why every time I call my wife, Ambi, he says, I'm blessed. That, that's, that's not, so every time I call her, I say, she's sleeping with me here. She is in my room. Every other person may leave me. Even my two sons will leave me, marry their husbands, their wives, and go to their own homes. The only person that will still stay with me is what? Blessing. Blessing. So when I said to her, you shall no more be called Cecilia. Your name shall now be known and called and addressed as blessing. Blessing Cletus Bassi. At all times, I am. So when you call a mama blessing, what are you saying? Over Cletus. So call her blessing Cletus. Can't you see it? Mama Cletus. So what do you begin with? Blessing. So when you say blessing, whose name do you call again? My name. It's my inheritance. You know, some people are not prophetic in what happens around them. I am very, very prophetic about things. I would have given her name glory. I would have given her name <laughs> some kind of a thing. But I say, I know what is permanent. Do you know where I got this revelation from? From, from uh, 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 Kenneth Copeland. When I was in the U.S. as a student, and I attended one of his ministers' conference in Minnesota, I, I was there when he began to teach. That is when I knew something, that there's something I must have to have. It should be permanent with me. And what is more permanent than wife and husband? That is a permanent thing. Permanent. So the blessing is permanent. When she's lying down, my blessing is lying down. When she's standing up, my blessing is standing up. So everywhere she goes, my blessing has gone. So what happens? She comes back. I am. The power of your word will affect your environment. So that is my heritage. It's my heritage. Man. My inheritance. Finally, why will I be blessed? Why am I talking about blessing now? Why is God saying he's going to bless you? It's because it is his will to bless you. It is his will to bless you. It is the will of God to bless you. That is his will. So it is not, oh God, if thou willest. 
if thou wantest. If thou, no, he is already saying to you, I will be blessed. That is what you find in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. I will be blessed. Are you there? That is the word. That is God's word. So I am blessed because it is the will of God. It is the nature of God. I can say to you, it is it's because I have a covenant with him and because it's my inheritance and finally it is his will. Now look at it. For I know. For I know. For I know. God is speaking. For I know. The thoughts. That I think towards you. Says the Lord. The thoughts of peace. And not of evil. So when you say to somebody you are blessed. It means what? Peace. That is, that is the word shalom. That is shalom. When Adonai blesses you, he says, Shalom Adonai. It's the blessings of the almighty Lord God of heaven that is said to you, it is my will, my thought all the time is that I'm not going to give you evil. Coronavirus is not your portion. I am not giving you evil. Diseases that kill people, not your portion. I am blessing you. It is my will that you be blessed. Come on, somebody. Know that God himself is saying to you, no matter how you have seen yourself, where you have seen yourself, what is happening around you, just know this very fact that I said to you that the thoughts that I have, that I think towards you are thoughts of good, are thoughts of blessing. Ah, and he said to give you a future and a hope. Your yeah, future is hopeful. 2020 is ending with hope. It's ending in hope. For faith is the things hoped for. What are you hoping for by the end of this year? Prosperity, blessings, increase, favor, good health, good money. Good opportunities. God open doors. You know, everything. What, what, what are you thinking about? What are you looking for? What is kind of a future are you looking for? He said, that is a future I'm going to give to you. A future and a hope. So no matter how people die to the left and to the right, just keep passing. And that's why I walk through the valley of the shadow of death in 2018 and 19 or 20 or 20 and they call it COVID-19 that has passed himself from 19 to 20 God punished the devil his work had expired it was it was 19 it's no more this is 20 so 19 your work finished you shall no more continue to afflict inflict yesterday in the pastoral prayer meeting that we had uh, Papa, uh, prelate, uh, uh, prelate, prelate uh, Isaiah, he, saw, he said, COVID had been put in the coven. So, COVID-19 is in the coven, and we lower it, and we silence it, because 19 cannot exist in 20. Are you listening to me? It was a mistake, and we allowed it to continue. So, by covenant, we counsel it. A future and a hope. Stand to your feet. What are you expecting? What do you want from God? How do you want your day to end? How do you want your month to end? How do you want your year to end? How do you want this fasting and prayer to end? After this prayer, after this fasting, what are you looking for? I am looking forward to blessings. I am looking forward to the blessings of the Lord. I am looking forward to the blessings. So I begin to say, for his goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow me, shall follow me. Goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not sickness and disease, not COVID-19. Goodness and mercy. It's a lie that I will be touched. No, no evil shall come near your dwelling. The devil shall not touch you. 
The wickedness of the evil one shall not come near you. Malobo shakata lalabakata. Oh, I rise in the power of, come on, open your mouth, pray. Goodness. Mercy. Following me. All the days of 2020. All my days in 2020. Goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. Shall follow me. Come on, exercise that faith. I lengthen my cord. I begin to move the sticks. I make room right now for myself. I make room for what God said. I make room because something is coming. Harvest is coming. Increase is coming. Blessings have come. So therefore I walk in the peace of God. The peace of God. The peace that passes all understanding is mine. So therefore the peace of God in my home. The peace of God in the office. The peace of God in the marketplace. The peace of God wherever I go. The peace of God is working for me. The peace of God. Oh come on people. Begin to open your mouth. Goodness. Mercy. Shall follow me. The glory of the Lord is upon my life. The faithfulness of God is upon my life. It is called blessings. Why? Because it's the nature of God to bless. Why? Because it is my covenant right to be blessed. Why? Because it is my inheritance to have it. Why? Because it is his will to bless me. Oh, Kalobo Shakatalaba. I speak over you in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. The God of heaven bless you. The God of heaven increase you. The God of heaven favors you. The God of heaven take away every hardship, every difficulty, every plan of the enemy against you, your family, your children, your business. I terminate that now in the name of Jesus. I command COVID-19 shall not see you. The wisdom of God has come upon you. You must survive. You must succeed. You must make good result in the name of Jesus. Let faith rise within you. Let faith rise within you. Don't let fear capture you. Let faith rise within you. I receive it. I receive faith to walk in the fullness of his revelation. I receive faith to have my inheritance walking for me. I receive faith that no evil shall come near me. Yea, even though I, yes, come in contact with any deadly thing, it shall not hurt me. By new covenant, by the new covenant of Christ Jesus, the life of the resurrection that I carry forbids any death sentence around my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I think that this evening, I may not make a mistake that that is a, uh, Pastor Faith's mother. It's so good to have you, my welcome. The Lord bless you. Thank you. The Lord bless you.